I've been on quite a tear lately when it comes to reading vintage science fiction and fantasy. Uh, on a whim, I decided to pick up this book, The Big Jump by Lee Brackett, and give it a try. I'd never heard of Lee Brackett until I really got into the weeds of vintage science fiction and fantasy. And I'm just so happy that I found that book. Uh, let's uh, let's dig into a little bit about Lee Brackett, and then we can uh, move on to my thoughts on the book as a whole. Lee Brackett has a pretty interesting backstory, and I'd like to take a little trip through her literary career before I give my thoughts on this book. Her writing career spanned many genres during her life. Her first published work was the science fiction story Martian Quest in the February 1940 issue of Astounding Science Fiction. Her first novel, titled No Good from a Corpse, was a hard-boiled detective story in the style of Raymond Chandler. She also had a great career as a screenwriter. After reading No Good from a Corpse, director Howard Hawks had his secretary call this guy Brackett to help finish the movie script for The Big Sleep, starring Humphrey Bogart. I would have loved to see his reaction when she showed up in his office. Her foray into this style of writing definitely altered the tone and themes of her later science fiction, which is very apparent in The Big Jump. Uh, I plan on taking a deeper dive into the second half of her career when I dig into her Eric John Stark novels, uh, her version of the classic Burroughs-style hero. Now, let's just say she had a long on-again, off-again literary career that included tons of science fiction and scripts for some famous John Wayne movies, along with writing credits for an unused script for The Empire Strikes Back. Unfortunately, her career was cut short with her death from cancer in 1978 at the age of 62. Let's start the review, as I always do, with what copy of the book I own, and then I can dive into my thoughts on the book overall. Um, my copy is one of those newer prints that seem to be popping up for older, previously out-of-print speculative fiction. Uh, it has the, the feel of those those print-on-demand books you get from like Amazon, and it isn't terrible, but I do plan on uh, keeping my eye out for a nice hardcover edition to add to my bookshelf. One thing that does drive me nuts about this book is the formatting on the back is awful. Like, look at that. It's like right on the edge. Like, there's no, there's no space, and I just, it's very very annoying. But uh, while we got the back of this here, let's, uh, let's read this bad boy. What awaits us out in space? New star drive engines promise to open up the galaxy to humankind, but the first ship to use the engines disappears and a sole survivor returns, alone and dying of some type of radiation. No one can figure out what has happened to the ship or the crew, nor does anyone know what happens to a ship traveling using star drive technology. Does some unknown horror await us out there? The only way to find out is to go out again. And Arch Komen is determined to be the one to solve the mystery. But is he and the rest of mankind ready for whatever awaits us beyond the big jump? I think that's a pretty good teaser for what you'll expect in the book. I love this book. It is a perfect mix of detective noir, atomic era science fiction, and intergalactic cosmic horror, which doesn't sound like it goes together well, but it is it is fantastic in this book. You really get a sense of hard-boiled detective from the main character, Arch. He has all the characteristics of a Chandler-esque detective, but he isn't a detective. He's just a man determined to use every skill he learned on the streets as a youth to figure out what happened to someone he knew, and no one, not even a mega corporation that controls entire swaths of Mars, is going to stop him. In the first chapter, we learn what Arch is willing to do to find out the truth about his missing friend, and we get a glimpse of the horror of the cosmos. Uh, Arch is witness to a suffering that leaves him terrified and begging for help. Uh, the second chapter immediately dives into the type of power corporations have in this world, and it sets up the rest of the story in a fantastic way. I don't want to dig any deeper into the overall story. Uh, it, it's too much fun to spoil. Plus, the book is really short. My copy clocks in at around 135 pages. That may turn off some readers, but 
it really packs a punch in those pages without skimping on details. Uh, some of the characters are a little one-dimensional, but I, I, there's characters like that in thousand-page books. And uh, what it what it doesn't lack is is depth of character for the the people that actually matter. And so you still feel grounded in this atomic era sci-fi. I actually find its length. Uh, quite, it's quite refreshing to have such a short book be so good. Uh, the more I dig into vintage science fiction fantasy, I notice that like every book is is tiny. Like, look at this thing. It's, like, all they're just so small and they're so good. Like, I do modern readers or modern writers just assume you have to have a seven hundred page book or you can't tell a good story. I mean, I I felt so immersed in this world, and it's such tight, neat writing. Like I, I just, I really enjoy it. It's very refreshing. I really don't have words for how much I love the mix of genres in this book. Uh, in my head, I kept picturing scenes from Blade Runner, but I replaced the nineteen eighties future aesthetic with art from Frank R. Paul and other Atomic Era artists. And then we get the horror on top of that. It's just like, it's too good to be true. Like it, it's, <laughs> I know I'm just mumbling and rambling at this point, but I just, it's so good. I love it. And the alien environments, like the descriptions that she used to, to, to make you feel like you were there. And it's just like, it's so creepy and just different. I just, I really, I really like it. Like the story's built around investigating what happened to the first crew to leave our solar system. And it's pretty scary. Like, even at the end, like, the the characters you follow that come back, they are changed. They are different. They are not okay. And I, it's just, it's really cool and it's really creepy. When I finished the book, I started looking around online to see what the consensus was on this novel. And most reviews say things along the lines of, it's pretty good, but it's nowhere near as good as our best pure sci-fi novel, The Long Tomorrow. And when I saw that, it made me incredibly happy. I can't wait to dive into more of her books. And it's so refreshing to be able to dig into vintage sci-fi and read books written by a woman in a time when women had very little representation in the genre. Uh, this book is definitely a 10 out of 10 will read again like go out there and get yourself a copy and let me know what you think in the comments uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you next time